Hey y'all, I'm Caitlin Sheffer from Emerald and Ivy Studios and I'm so glad you're joining me here today on my YouTube channel. I've been teaching watercolor classes online for a few years now, but I've never developed exclusive content for YouTube until now. If you'd like to follow along, hit subscribe and every Thursday I'll be releasing new content from everything from watercolor techniques to hand lettering to just creative living in general and I'll probably throw in a few pep talks as well because I'm really passionate about building your confidence as an artist and just in life in general. I'd love for you to follow along and leave comments below with ideas of topics you'd like for me to cover. All right, let's get started. Today we're gonna cover a really simple watercolor technique, the wet on wet method. That means we're going to be taking a wet loaded paintbrush and adding paint to already wet paper. We're going to be making some washes, which I find very therapeutic and calming, and I hope you do too. The supply list for this class is really simple, as is for most watercolor painting. Um, I'm just going to be using a couple different sizes of round brushes. These are the Princeton Heritage line. They're my favorite brushes, but any kind will do. I'm going to be using a size 16 and a size 10. I find that the larger sizes are better suited for washes, but any size brush will do. It might just take you a little more time if they're smaller. Um, you'll want some watercolor paper. I like to use cold pressed and um, you'll also want some paints. I have my own paint palette that I've squeezed my own paints into the tray, let them dry, and then that's how I use my paints. But you're welcome to use a pre-mixed palette, um, whatever works. You don't need to have fancy paints for this project. I prefer um, Winsor & Newton professional paints as well as the Daniel Smith paints. But like I said, any kind will, will really be fine. You'll also want a water jug and a little paper towel. All right, so I love to paint washes uh, to use as textured backgrounds on some of the digital designs that I make. Um, but I also really love to do them as a quick warm up exercise um, or if I just need to relax a little bit. It's a really good thing to do for stress relief. So what you're going to want to do is I'm going to start with my largest brush, which I have is, um, today is a 16 round. It is the Princeton Heritage brush. And I'm just starting off by loading it really well with my water. I'm just getting it really good into the water, loading it up. Okay. So once you've done that, paintbrush is wet. I'm going to go ahead and start adding it just wet, nice wet water to my paper. This is the first step in using the wet on wet method. Okay, and I kind of like to work this way across the page, but you're welcome to do it differently. Okay, looks like I had a little bit of paint still in my water jar it's getting on my paper, but that's okay. We're going to cover it up. All right, so I'm going to use a green and blue color scheme today just because that's my favorite color scheme, but you're welcome to choose your own. Let you see me as I mix it. Gonna add a little bit of the phthalo turquoise. Alright. So now that I have my brush loaded with wet paint, I'm gonna just go ahead and start dragging it into my water. There's no really wrong way to do it. I try not to go too much in one place like this because the the paper can start to um, pill. And then as I go along, I'm just going to change the color slightly so there's some nice variations in the color. And you can just dab, drop color, and watch it kind of fan out. 
or you can drag it along and kind of create these pretty lines. Okay, so I've got a nice level layer of green. Now I think I'm gonna add in a little bit more of the turquoisey color to give it a little bit of some variation. I'm using um, the Windsor and Newton cold press paper, 140 pound, and I like it. It's not my absolute favorite, but it is. Um, it's a good quality professional paper. Okay, I like that. How that's looking? That's really pretty. Um, just for fun, I'm going to show you these awesome metallic gold paints. And I'll link everything for you in the comments. I'm just gonna get this nice and wet. Takes a second. It's already dry. So once I've got some gold on my brush and my paper is still wet, I'm just gonna dab in a couple lines. I love to see the gold explode on the paper, and you can tell there's like a nice shimmer to it. paper and when it dries it's so pretty and metallic I love it Now you can add in the gold at the end. I just, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it in steps because I don't want this part of the paper to dry before I come back to it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more water to this part of the paper. And I'm gonna mix up more of a yellowy green. Alternate between dropping it in and dragging your brush. You can also try tilting the paper. You can see how it blends. You can see how this is a very soothing thing to do when you're stressed. It's very mesmerizing to watch. Okay, I'll go back to a little bit more of the blue. Blue green. You can see right here, I got the the paint where it's dry. It's not wet, so it's got more of a dry texture here versus here, where you can see it kind of blending into the other colors. So if you start getting this happening, you just need to go in with a little more water so that it blends. section. Now I did get a little bit too much water, so if that happens you can just dab it with your paper towel. It's 
why I love watercolors is they're so forgiving. Now I kind of like to leave a raw edge with, of, with the white, but you're welcome to cover the entire page. That's totally fine. Now that I have my, col my main color done, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some more of the gold before it dries. You can do lines, you can do shapes. I kind of like this more organic shape of it just blending. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just let your paintbrush determine the way. Let's see it up close. It just has the most beautiful shimmer. And there you have it. You can let it dry and you can use it um, as some abstract artwork, put it in a frame. You can um, also scan it into your computer and use this as like a, a desktop background or an iPhone wallpaper. You can even sell it as a digital good uh, for people who want to use them.